Welcome to Take Yoga Now. I'm Wendy, and I come here to join you Monday through Friday. Each day has a specific theme that we look to build upon through our yoga practice and to apply through our daily living. And at the end of each practice, I will provide a soul assignment that is part of what we've done together that can be a little more reflective of perhaps what you need to practice in the real world. And I also love to thank our partners and our audience of Breast Cancer Answers, Colon Cancer Answers, and Prostate Cancer Life. Let us begin. Please find yourself in a comfortable seated position. Some of you may be on a yoga mat, others on a chair, or you may even want to sit on a pillow or a block just to help raise the hips. So the sits bones have a little more grounding and the knees can be brought down by gravity instead of elevated, pulling on the hips to create more discomfort. With that said, start to move your ears over your shoulders and your shoulders over your pelvis. So you feel this natural engagement along your abdominal and back body region. Your eyes may wish to close. As your eyes close, start to tune into the rhythm of how you're breathing and how this may affect the way you are thinking. Take a moment to visit right in the center of your eyebrows, what is called our third eye, the place of insight or intuition. Sometimes when we close our outer eyes, we start to gain this insight of this awareness, this GPS spiritual system of inner guidance. And just pay attention to the thoughts that come and go, and the ones that want to stick around for a few breath cycles. Let the inhale rise through the nasal passageways as you work your way down towards the belly and lower back. Let the exhale feel this gentle ha vibration as if you're stimulating the oceanic wave inside of your body mind. Creating rhythm. Watching those thoughts go by. Now invite your awareness, your attention, or even your imagination towards your lips, your mouth, your throat, and the words you choose to speak in your daily rounds. The language that we use, do we talk as if we are our own best friend, and we look to enhance another, or are we in constant state of complaining or putting others down? Just witness what is showing up, throat, tongue, lips, this morning. Few deep cycles of breath here. Now bring your imagination, your awareness, your attention towards your drum, I like to call it, our heart space. And have a seat there honoring any feelings, emotions, perhaps what you may have woken up with this morning. And just take a look inside. Moving from thinking mind into feeling body. And as we honor these three places, we're looking for a state of congruency. This helps build our belief system. When our thoughts are in this congruency with our words that we choose to speak, and the emotions that we choose to feel, we start to manifest things, whether it's with greater ease or with greater challenge, based on what we think, speak, and feel. Now we, have, we are in the month of May. May 21st, we're one month away from summer. The month of May is asking of you, as you look outside in nature, the soil's very fertile, flowers and fruits, are showing their colors, their manifestations. And the earth is asking us, where inside of our soul are we ready to recreate ourselves, our lives, based on what we think, what we speak, and what we feel? Witnessing the quality of your breath, invite your hands to your heart space and declare your focus for this morning's practice. What we believe we practice, and what we practice is who we become. And what happens is we often tend to engage our fears that keep us bound inside, our false evidence appearing real. Nature's asking us to bloom where we are planted, but are we regressing? Are we like a bird in the nest, 
where the nest is wanting to get built higher and higher to create more safety inside of our own little lives. As that is said, let's slowly start to move. If you're seated on a block or a chair, come down towards the earth. And then change the position of your legs if that's in agreement with your knees. Welcome your hands towards your shin bones and allow your arm bones to remain long as you uplift your heart space and just pulling kindly out of your pelvis. Let the inhaling breath send your heart space forward, a little elevation in the chin. As you exhale, draw inward. Feel that navel point start to pull back towards your spine and your chin start to look down towards your heart space. And then continue this rhythmic manner, inhaling, coming forward lightly. Exhale, rounding and going back. A few rounds, coming and going, establishing the role of rhythm. So much of life, we go to the gym, we go on hikes, there's so much of working out. And the yoga practice, at least to me, coming from a fitness background, then a yoga background, it's more about working in. Not as much working out. Working out as a bonus for the physical body, but really coming home to the mind and heart and acknowledging the fears we're carrying that's keeping us safely bound inside of our cocoon so we can feed the ego instead of our higher self. Let the inhaling breath return your spine nice and tall. Exhale, invite your hands to your heart space to reconfirm why you are here this morning. What is it that you believe? And what is it that you are practicing? Because what we practice is what we tend to get better at, consciously or subconsciously. Let the inhaling breath guide your wings, your arms open wide. Let the exhaling breath invite left hand over to right knee, right arm back behind you, feeling a nice stacking of the spine as you twist behind, keeping the jawline carefully drawing back and just easing into a light twist, honoring whatever your body is healing on the inside. Sometimes less is more. As you finish that exhalation, follow it to the end, and then inhale, coming back through center, whether elbows are bent to honor that lower spine or whether arms are long to engage more of the spine. And then right hand finds a way to left knee, left arm back behind. Inhale, lengthening through the spine. Let the exhale lead you towards your back body. Taking note what side carries more, more sensation, more heaviness, or perhaps even less space. Let the inhaling breath start to unwind you, coming tall, coming high, depending on what's going on in that back body. Let the exhaling breath bend into your elbows and invite your hands back behind you. Place your hands, fingers forward if that feels good for your wrists or fingers turned out. Allow your shoulders to move into the back body and just allow your heels to touch down, your feet a few fist width apart. Elevating the hips a few inches, and then work the hips back slightly and bend your elbows, feeling some muscular engagement in the triceps and also along the outer rib cage. And just feeling somewhat instable. And then on the exhaling breath, allow the sits bones to ground. Let the hands become a little more comforting. Widen your feet, perhaps the width of your mats. And then allow your legs to windshield wiper, side, center, and side. Allowing inner and outer hips to rock. You may feel this in the lower spine. Notice if your shoulders are starting to creep up. Can you keep them down along the side in an easy manner, elbows slightly bent? Let us meet with our knees on the right side. Use your hands to help inch your rear coming up. The arch of your right foot is like a puzzle piece upon your left knee. Let it comfortably fit to stabilize that lower body. Walk your hands around your right side. And just creating a twist for that mid and upper spine. Some of you may even want to take this just a little bit lower. We're still in that warming up stage. So less is more, getting acquainted to the energy we have inside of us. A few deep breaths, maybe the eyes close, and perhaps your face softens. Our body likes to follow our face. And often we're not even, even dimly aware of the expression we have on our face. And then allow the inhaling breath to guide you upright. 
and then slowly unwind. Resetting the feet, chest nice and open, elbows slightly bent, windshield wiper the legs, side, center, side. And that heart space lift a little higher, and just witnessing the quality of your mind. The month of May is asking us, what are we creating in our lives? Are we holding back because it's safer to hold back and build our nest high? As you're ready, we'll meet with the knees on the left side, using the hands to walk us up. Left arch of the foot, seals on that right knee, and then you start to kindly spiral towards your back body, paying attention to the information your body is giving you. Sometimes just halfway in the pose is perfect for where you need to be, a work in instead of a work out to begin. A few deep breaths. I like to be on my finger pads because my arms aren't as long as my torso, so it causes a little more shrugging action. You just have to be careful that you're not putting too much weight in those finger pads. There's a sense of pulling up. Allowing the exhaling breath when you're ready to unspiral. Coming through center, allow the soles of your feet to find each other. Maybe a bit of a distance away from your inner thighs. A diamond-like shape. Hands may come to the tops of your feet. Hands may thread through the shin bones and around. Descend your forehead down towards your feet and take a moment to reflect on the inside. What thoughts are crossing by your mind? What words go with those thoughts? What feelings are a result of those words? About two more breath cycles here. Inhale, count of four. Exhale, gentle ha vibration, four or more. And again. Allowing the next inhaling breath to slowly start to guide you up. Feel as if the front body is coming towards the back body and your spine is starting to line up a little bit more over the pelvis as you roll up. Let's make our way to all fours, a nice smooth transition. Your hands are placed underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your pelvis, tops of your feet grounding. Cat and cow. I don't know if I've ever taught a yoga class without doing cat and cow. The exhale draws you inward, chin towards chest, navel towards spine, and the inhale draws you outward, honoring how high you gaze up. Some of us may need a, just a gentle gaze forward. We're honoring the flexion and the extension of our spine. This helps the spine find natural alignment, more ease. Body is made to move and to dance. Allowing your next inhale to find your way back to your table. Feel as if you can lace your shoulder blades more into the back body so they're not creeping up to the ears and they feel more engaged. Allow your toes to turn under, the back of your neck to feel long, and then hover your knees over the mat if you like a little more work with strength. If this gets heavy in the wrist, please keep your knees grounded. If you like a little more challenge from here, keeping your pelvis without lifting or lowering, lengthen your right leg behind in plank, adding your left leg. Hold it here for the shoulders lace in the back body. Caution on that tailbone lifting too high. Feel as if that tailbone is elongating to feel that lower belly draw into the lumbar spine. And then finding your way to downward facing dog or even against the earth, child's pose. Take five deep breaths here. Whether here in down dog or whether you wish to come out of down dog sooner and just arrive in a nice sweet child's pose where the crown and forehead meet the earth. Take a moment to get a little quieter. Witness what is passing by, that inner vision, that inner eye.
Let your inhaling breath guide you back up to table. As you can see, table, all four position, is a very lovely, smooth transition. Coming to down dog just briefly, feeling the heels start to lower, the lower belly engage, and then soften into your knees. Look forward between your hands. Lightly walk or step the feet forward to a standing forward fold. Your knees may want to bend to protect those hamstrings. You may want to dangle for a moment. You may even need to get a little watery by bending and straightening one side at a time. Some of you may want to express more of a stretch, walking your hands over to the right side of your pinky toe edge, and maybe even bending left knee as you feel more of an engagement in the back of that right calf and the lengthening action of that hamstring. Head dangles, the back of the neck feels exposed to the sunlight. Let your inhaling breath guide you through center. Both knees may need to even out, bent or straight. Exhale, create a second diagonal. Right knee may want to be more bent as the left leg lengthens and the head and hair go more. More to the gravitational forces to remind us to let go. When we let go, there's room to explore the newness. Returning back towards center, that standing forward fold, the knees may need to soften even more, and then slowly start to roll up. Feel your body like this gentle ball, and as if each vertebrae independently is leading the way. You're giving time and opportunity for each vertebrae to express itself as you slowly come up to standing. Glance at your feet. Are they a mirror image of each other? Second toes pointing forward. Keeping the feet nice and planted. As the feet are planted, invite your arms outward and upward. Inhaling. Tailbone may start to lift. Feel that tailbone just get a little heavier from the engagement of that pubic bone so the pelvis feels more stable. Allow the fingers to lower and the palms to go up. Do bend into your elbows and perhaps soften your knees. Create a figure eight, like loop to let the shoulders receive. The month of May, we're just one month away from the summer solstice. Spring changing into summer. Spring is asking us, what are we creating? Where are we ready to bloom? And maybe we're not even ready. But life may be pushing us. The tailwinds are strong. It's a Chinese year of the snake. What do we need to shed so we can move forward? From here, let the inhaling breath invite your arms outward and upward, creating a half sun salutation. Swan dive down to the earth, lengthen as you lower. Can you go slow enough to feel your way instead of getting to point B? Let the inhaling breath guide you halfway up. Most of us will have our hands on our thighs and elongate instead of locking back. Four points of connection the feet, more balance, we elongate forward. Let the exhaling breath allow us to fold downward. Inhale, slowly push into the feet, coming up. Some of us may need to roll up instead of reversing that swan dive to honor whatever's going on in our back body. Inviting the hands back to your heart space for a moment to ask yourself, where is my mind? What am I paying attention to on the inside? Once again, inhale, opening from the inside. What talents inside of me can I share to the world on the outside? Sometimes our talents feel very natural that we forget that they even are talents until we're reminded by another. Let the exhaling breath soften our knees. Take your right leg, step your right leg back into a runner's lunge. I'd like for you to use your hands to walk quarter of the way around. The toes are pivoting forward, the knees are softening, and take a wide forward fold. Head may become parallel with the feet, hands may need to greet underneath the shoulders. Most importantly, you greet yourself where you are. And then we take a moment to stay, to connect to what we're thinking, how we use words to express those thoughts, and what shows up through our feelings. 
and let the inhaling breath gather just a halfway point to where you're lengthening but soft. Let your knees bend, heels turn in, toes are turning out. And now we start to walk our hands towards our left foot. Your left heel may want to lift, it may want to stay grounded. And we're just doing some side, center, side lunging working in the frontal plane of our bodies. It's not very easy to get into those inner outer thighs based on a lot of our linear forward work. Then can you just start to tune into that rhythmic breathing, inhaling one side of this, maybe exhaling through the transition. And then one more time each side. And you may prefer to just hold instead of move, move instead of hold. All depends on where you are at each day. What energy we need to greet. Do we need to be kind? Do we need to com be compassionate to ourselves? From here, returning back to that nice standing forward fold. This time a little more pigeon toe of the big toes, pinky toes in, heels wider. And descend, hands may need to touch the ground. Hands may even want to touch your blocks. And then hands come to your waistline. Elbows come up to the sky. Some of us will bend our knees and slowly roll up. Hands may need to even push off the thighs. Others, with a little more core activation, there's a lengthening action from the lifting up of the back body as you come up. As you come up, give a little more parallel to your feet. Pushing down through your feet, lengthening through your spine, reset that pelvis. And by your arms, like wings out to the side, palms up. Allow the shoulders to soften. And imagine that you have a headrest behind. Your head's moving back. Now your abdominal wall connects because your head is balanced over your spine. From here, start to slide. Right hand down the outer seam, whether you have one or not. Imagine it's there, lengthening left arm up to the sky. Some of us will look up because that feels appropriate for our necks. Others will look down or forward because that feels better. As we're lengthening up, feel that left foot connecting deeper, as if it's building roots and going right through your mat into the earth. A few deep breaths here. Notice if that lower belly is starting to creep forward. Let it give support to that lumbar region. And then allow that top arm to create a half or full circle in front of you. The left foot opens into warrior two, completely in the direction of where the knee is going. Right foot has a little more of a 45 degree angle. We're setting shoulders over pelvis. We feel as if we're this lovely colored taffy being pulled in two directions. As you're bending into this front knee, keep pushing back through that back foot. Gazing forward if that feels better, or gazing over that left middle finger. And allow the palms to turn up and to turn down. Now this looks a lot easier than it is, so your arms may get tired. So the arms may need to lower and lift as opposed to just rotating at the wrists. If you need to tease your brain, rotate one down at the same time you're rotating the other one up. So working through the shoulder joints. And anything that we're doing that's more in alignment with the earth and less in the spiral. Working on our computers, talking on our phones, driving. We want to move the energy up and down. From here, holding warrior two, maybe going a little deeper. Spine taller. And take a moment to let your belly hang out. Just let your belly hang out. Notice what that does to the pose. At first, it may feel comforting. Now invite that lower belly inward and let it uplift you like you're just giving your self-esteem a nice elevation and then lift all ten toes and reset them. Inhale, lengthening through that left leg, pivot the left foot parallel to the right, hands in prayer. That might have been a little challenging, just honor where you are at. Take a pause, eyes may close. And just notice if the spine's getting a little tired from being held nice and tall and long, take a moment to be where you're at. And then opening your arms like wings, inhale. 
sliding left arm down left thigh honoring those feet so if there's too much of a turn in on those toes reset to more parallel just honoring what the ankles knees and hips are doing head looks up forward or down and just take a look inside of your life what challenges what lessons may be showing up for you and truly how you are handling them are you utilizing the creative force of May to help move you through? Or are you building the nest taller and higher to stay inside of this cocoon? Allow this top arm to circle and lead you to warrior two on the right side. Right knee points in the direction of that right foot. Second toe, especially left foot, has a 45 degree angle. This leg may want to feel like it's sinking in. Can you ground that back foot as you bend that front knee and then rotate at the wrists? Take a moment to witness the quality of your breathing. And then alternate. One wrist is turning up as the other one is turning down. And then let both go up. Let your abdominal wall hang out. How does that feel to breathe? And then invite it in and up. Let your palms turn down, your shoulders soften, pause. Our warrior stance. Can we find the soft spots inside of our strength? Can we put up boundaries that are healthy for ourselves to make sure we're not leaking our energy? Let the inhale guide that right leg long, hands to your heart space, pivot your feet parallel to each other. Let the inhaling breath guide your arms wide, clasp your hands back behind, left thumb over right thumb. Palms come towards each other or whatever you can do. Appreciate what you can do today, because it's all we have. Soften into your knees for some. Lengthening forward, as you lengthen forward, a lot of pull up in that lower belly. That's what's going to give love to that lumbar spine. And then take a moment to dangle, whether that means bending or straightening. Can the palms come closer together? Can the crown of your head work towards your mat? Maybe the legs strengthen and lengthen. Two to three more breaths here. Glancing on the inside. Can we allow this to be a work in instead of a work out? Notice what happens when we work from the inside out. And then the hands slowly start to release. Whether they reconnect that pelvis, whether the knee is bent, we roll up or we lengthen out and up. Slowly coming back to center. Once you feel stable, walk your feet. Heel toe. Little adjustment in the clothing, the hair. And then feel yourself root once again, four points of connection. Palms open, elbows back. Shoulders reconnect into their sockets. Ears are nicely pulled up towards the sky. Eyes open at a focal point or eyes closed looking within. And just taking a moment. Taking a moment to feel your feet against the earth. Taking a moment to slowly move your hands more outward and upward as if you're symbolically just really spreading your wings. Holding them here or holding them here, somewhere in between. Taking a moment to feel. Feel what it's like to symbolically open your heart through your arms. It may not be comforting at first. We have the potential to fly, to open like a butterfly. But often it's easier to stay in this safe, fearful place of our ego, this inner cocoon. 
But what does this cocoon really do for us? If we cannot share our talents, we cannot use our knowledge as currency, what good is it? Allow your wings to slowly bring energy back to you, as if you can fill your own heart from the inside. What would you put there? And then shifting your weight to your right foot. Allow your left heel to lift. Hands can open out to the side to help with balance. They can be down by your side or return to prayer. Allow your left toe to extend and just tap it, really witnessing the quality of what's going on in that right foot. I have some shaking, I have some instability in between inner and outer ankle, and I may feel a little bit towards my outer calf. Just witnessing what part of that standing foot is working and what part needs to work. Allow this left foot to open to the outside of the left hip. Notice what shifts in the standing foot. Can your breath still have a rhythmic connection between your thoughts, your words, and your feelings? Allow the left toe to turn out and bring it towards the back of you, maybe even more of a hover than a touchdown, and just witnessing what is going on in that standing leg. Does the standing leg stabilize for a moment? Does it shift? Does it show you new strengths? And then bring that left leg back out to the side, and then towards the front. I'll about allow both feet to connect in your standing mountain, this pillar of strength. This pose, Tadasana, is representative of whatever is going on around you shall not disturb what is inside your interior, stable as the outer mountains, allowing your feet to roll towards the pinky toe edges and allow your big toes to re return back down, planting the feet, and allow to roll towards your big toe edges and shift. Take a moment just to shake the hands wiggle the hips, kick it around. We have a second side to witness the quality of stability in that standing left side. Hands where you find comfort, left foot starts to communicate towards the earth, its roots. Feeling your length and inviting in space and releasing that space through the inhaling breath, opening up the lungs and the exhaling breath, more of that contracting. Right knee starts to lift when you're ready. Balancing on this left foot. I often hear from clients as we get older that there's less balance, and that is true. We have less balance as we get older. Just the act of walking is a balancing act. Invite that right toe out in front of you. Notice what and how this left leg is communicating. Notice if this is more comforting on this side. And then allow that right foot to open to the outside of the right hip. Witness what is going on in this standing left leg. Is the quadricep starting to fatigue? Inner or outer ankle? Is your mind wishing you were somewhere else or hungry for your next meal? Now allow the right toes to turn out. Bring those right toes back, a little more of that glute activation in the back of the thigh. Witness what is going on in that standing foot. And then slowly return right leg out to the side. And then right leg to the front. And then stand with the feet together. Shake it out, walk it out. A little assessment to give you opportunity to notice what side of you is dominant, what ankle may be taking over, what part of your foot likes to communicate more, especially when you walk. If you're walking and only part of your foot is communicating to the earth, you do that over time, we start to wear our joints, more so than if we're conscious of our placement. From here, let the inhaling breath gather you outward and upward. Let the exhaling breath invite your hands towards your heart space. Let the inhaling breath open your arms nice and wide to the side. Let the exhaling breath invite your hands back to your heart space. Allow your feet and knees to come towards each other. 
and then start to sit back just halfway into imaginary chair. As you sit back, instead of your knees going forward to track over your toes, imagine that you have a wall right in front of your knees and you're sitting back with the knees right up against the wall and not going through the wall. It's very easy for that lower back to create added curvature. Draw in that lower belly, feel some lengthening action here, and invite your elbows and our lovely saguaro cactus arms. Allow your nose just to look up for a moment and just notice how that feels in the back of your neck. There's more of a compression going on that we really would like some elongation. So let your nose and chin soften so the back of the neck is more even with the spine as the elbows are going back. A little more lift in that lower belly. Lift all ten toes. Gaze at a focal point and take three breath cycles here. This should be somewhat challenging. It feel good, mainly in that lower spine, a little more activation in the shin bones. Strengthen our feet, our carriage. Now start to send your middle fingers like wings out to the side as if you are a bird leaving the nest for the first time. Soften each and every toe slowly down to the earth as if you can do it one by one. Start to shift your rear back more. Notice how your neck and head are still aligned with your spine more of an airplane squat. Chest may even want to rest on the thighs for a little relaxed state. If you like a little more work and heat, invite your arms on in front as your hips reach back. If your knees are healthy and you like more of a balanced challenge, start to elevate your heels off the earth. Invite your hands to prayer. Keep your hips hovering over your heels and connect to the breath. We'll all meet slowly in a standing forward fold. Let your inhaling breath guide you halfway up for length. Let your exhaling breath allow you to fold down and forward. Let your in next inhaling breath guide you outward and upward or rolling the spine up. And then let your hands touch at the top. Invite your hands to that third eye point for a moment. Honoring the thoughts you think. You are in control of them. We only get better at that which we practice. If you wish to become a better meditator, don't spend all your time avoiding what you wish to be better at. Invite your thumbs to your lips, honoring the words you speak. Are your words used to uplift another and to deplete yourself? Can you use your words in a righteous manner for yourself and another. And then invite your thumbs to your heart space for your feelings. They may not always be factual, but they're there. Inhaling, let's make our way down to our mat. Opening up. Exhaling, swan dive down to the earth. Nice smooth transition. Not just on our yoga mat, but we try to do it through life. Take groceries in the house. We don't want to overpack our wrists. We want to think wisely. So unintended consequences do not have to happen. Finding this plank pose, some of us will be full in this push-up, some of us will have our knees grounded. Slowly lower. Elbows may want to bend in a half plank, or you may want to crocodile your way down, where your heart, your head, and then your tail touches down. Invite your arms out in front of you, your legs back behind you, and if you needed to do a little crab walk, whatever I just did, to get back in the center, please do. Allow your forehead to hover. Your arms are stretched out in front of you. Your legs back behind you. Can you feel all five toes touching so your ankles feel even instead of curled out? Let the inhaling breath lift your right leg back and up. Not too high, but enough to feel a nice stretch coming along that inner thigh, inner hip flexor, and some of that glute. Exhale lower. Doesn't have to be much to feel. Inhale, left leg lifts. Back and up. Exhale lower. You may wish to just do one leg at a time like this. Others may want to add opposite arm. Right leg lifts, left arm lifts. Lower. Try to keep a four second count in both directions. Inhale, left leg, right arm, or maybe you're just only doing the legs. Exhale lower. So much of our daily work is done to the front of our bodies. 
So this gives us opportunity to bring awareness to our back body, these postural muscles that help hold us upright. Caution on overlooking in front of you. How about one more per side, a little slower. Lower belly's connecting. If there's anything going on that lumbar back that's speaking, you may need to slow this down. You may need to just take a time out and practice breathing. From here, invite your hands by your sides. Roll your shoulders back. Push up with hands and knees. Take a nice wide child's pose. Taking time out to rest, to regather our knowledge, blend it with our wisdom, and use it for currency for our actions. Let the inhaling breath guide you upright through table. Welcome your legs around to the front, easy style cross-legged position or half lotus or full. Spine tall, eyes open or eyes closed. And just witness your breathing. Go there first. The yogis say that our mind is the master of all of our senses. Our sight, what we have in our mind, we see outward. What we hear is sometimes what we want to hear or what we don't want to hear what we taste, what we touch, what we connect to. But the yogis remind us that our breathing, our breath, in a rhythmic, controlled manner, is the master of our minds. So we do have a choice of what we entertain in our heads. Energy follows thought. When we sit with our mind and hearts, it might be easier to go work out. But what happens when you take the time to work in and stand under your mind and heart and learn more about you so you can relate better to another? What if we practice working in before working out or working out and remembering to come back and work in? Just take five more breaths here. I'll give you a moment to find that inner voice that is yours, your positive teacher within you. Our fears, are they really false evidence appearing real? Do we build stories around them that really aren't all that true? Or have we, are we in need to make peace with what is true? Let's make our way down to our back body. Tippy toes connect. If you like a little more core activation, whole foot connects, or hands may even need to assist you. Take your time to lower slow. Keep drawing that center of gravity, that sea of energy just below that navel point. And just taste a few challenges. What happens when we slow down instead of try to get to the next place? When you reach the earth, just let your arms go overhead. And then let your elbows bend along your side. Let your heels walk back closer to your rear and reconnect to the saguaro cactus arms. We want our elbows even with our armpits just under our shoulders and the backs of our hands coming close to the earth. Many of us, we can't even touch the back of our hands based on design and based on all the hard work we've done over a lifetime. Often our chins lift up. I can feel mine starting to lift up, a little softening so there's more length in the back body. Now just feel your sacrum, that triangular bone, towards that lower back body, soften a little more towards the mat. I like you to engage the shoulders, the elbows, and as close as you can to the back of your hands. 
push down into your mat for about 10 seconds and please do not hold your breath. You're isometrically pushing the backs of your shoulders, your elbows, and the backs of your hands down into the mat. And then soften, let it all be. We're going to do that two more times. This helps the resetting of the shoulders, the shoulder girdle, with the shoulder being such an instable joint based on hovering over our daily work. This just helps get our posture a little more aligned for what we have to do the rest of today. And again, push down, back of your shoulders, elbows, back of your hands, and witness, can you move your breath freely as you're igniting, as if you could actually imprint these saguaro cactus arms into your carpet, your mat, wherever you are, and then lighten the load, soften. Take a deep breath. Release it, relax it one more time. Push down, shoulders, elbows. Careful that those shoulders are not creeping up to the ears. And maybe the chin has elevated. Soften into that chin. Re-educating our body, our minds, our spines. And then from here, soften the elbows. And just let the arms drift down by your side. Welcome your right knee into your chest. Allow your left leg to be long, whether you lift it to the sky and slowly lower it, or whether you wish just to allow the heel to slide. And allow this right knee to circle around a few times in one direction, honoring that hip joint to where it can move, and then change in the direction the other way. Allowing the knee to come back to center. And then allow that knee to drift off towards the right side of your rib cage without lifting your left glute to your left hip. You may even want to put your left hand to guide it downward. And is there room to lift the right foot up towards the sky as the right knee bends? Right hand may need to come outside the pinky toe, inside the foot. This is a half happy baby pose. And if you witness those sweet infants, they are. They're very curious about their toes, their feet, and they usually hold both feet at one time for the full happy baby pose. Helping to open that inner groin, outer hip to give some release in the pelvis so that we have some space in the lower part of our back and to build that strength from where space is. As you're ready, let the exhale guide your right knee towards your chest Place your right foot down with the right knee bent. Feel a little engagement here just so that lower back doesn't overly exaggerate its lift. And then tuck your right toes inside your inner left thigh. Open your right arm like a wing to the side. And then guide with your left arm your right leg over. By keeping the foot hooked gives you a little more stability. You may feel this all along the lower back body. You may feel it more in your glute. Your head may turn and look at that right hand. And just take a moment to feel this diagonal line going from right shoulder as your anchor through that right hip over as you're crossing towards that left side. Eyes may need to close, face may need to soften. One wing is open. Sometimes that's what it takes patience to open one wing at a time. By opening both arms, it's a balancing act. We come from the inside out. We work in, then we get to work out. Slowly guide that right leg back through center. Bring left knee to a hug at your chest. You may need to reset your head, neck, spine. And the right leg may just lower or may lift and lower. Let that left hip circle around a few times, one direction, and then a few times the other direction. And just so you remember, this is a breathing exercise first and foremost, and then the physical body moves, making your way for that diagonal half happy baby pose. Right hand may need to stay against the hip. Our yoga poses are called asanas. A means to be. Sana means one with our infinite potential. So when we come into these shapes, it's letting us know where we're bound, where we're open, 
maybe what emotions are hiding inside. It gets us an idea of what's inside of our minds. And when we make peace with all of that, guess what happens? We become like the butterfly. We awaken potential. We don't have to stay in this fearful cocoon, even though sometimes I prefer it. Inviting the knee back through, left foot grounds, left toes hook inside of that right inner thigh, right hand goes outside. You may have a hard time between right and left, it comes. Left arm is extended out like that half wing, the hips stack, the shoulders stay more anchored, honoring the neck. If you are finding strain, pull back. If you're finding that you're complacent, push forward. Let that next exhale leave you and let the inhale fill you, return you back to center and then slide legs forward, embrace your head with your hands, fingers are going down, elbows are going up and take a moment to look at your navel or your toes. And I'd like for you to think of hammocking your head as long as your neck is okay with this, check in. Your hands are fully supporting your head, and your head is lightly leaning back. And then you slowly give it a little bit more weight. Your hands are the hammock. Your head is the body. And you're relaxing into your hammock. And as you do that, your hands are slowly guiding your head back down to the earth, supporting, stable, and then feeling more space behind that throat, that voice. Allow your arms to slowly open along your sides, your toes to turn out. Your shoulders may need to retreat back a little bit more. Your final pose of Shavasana. Close your eyes. Rest on your back body. Retreat inside. And just tune in to the sound of OM. OM can be spelled O-M. I like the A-U-M. It gives you a little bit more vibration. And imagine this OM at the root of your pelvis, your hips down to your toes. As if you can feel the sound, the vibration, tuning your roots for greater walks on this earth. And then connect to the Om from your roots and move towards in your mind's eye, just below your navel, your center of gravity and connect to the vibration of AUM. A is to all that we create in our lives. U is to all that we preserve. And M is to all that we need to leave behind so we start the order of creation again. The OM underneath the navel. Now invite your awareness to your solar plexus as we're tracing not only the endocrine system, but these vortexes of energy called chakras, wheels of energy that are around our endocrine system. They carry emotions. They carry sensations. They carry information. Feeling the energy, the OM, the vibration at your solar plexus and that butterfly of your rib cage. And then welcome your awareness to your heart space. Connect to the beat of your drum and thread in some vibratory sounds of A-U-M. The said OM is the pre-mortal sound. It brings us back to our primitive nature of all 
there is. From your heart space, invite the OM to your throat. Connecting to the AUM at your throat. Moving your awareness from your throat to the gateway inside of your third eye, the center of your eyebrows, towards the center of your brain, connecting to the vibr vibratory sound of OM here. And slowly connecting to one more center, the crown of your head, the place that it said that spirit enters, the place of intellect, the place of thoughts, but then the place beyond that, the place before thoughts and intellect appears. What is that place? Connect to the OM here. Sound is the quickest form of energy transference. It can transfer energy just by singing our favorite song, by hearing a loud noise, it amps our nervous system, by hearing a calm voice, softens and connects us. Connecting to all the centers, Shavasana. Shavasana is translated as corpse pose. Dying to the old, the sweet surrender, so that we can create and awaken anew. Give yourself five cycles of breath before you meet me in an uprighted seated position on your mats. Count them. Four more deep breaths. We come back where we started, as if we get to know this place for the very first time. We take time to honor our thoughts, what it is we're carrying subconsciously and consciously by slowing down to ourselves. Honoring the words we use, are they empowering ourselves, are they empowering another? And honoring the feelings that we carry inside as fuel to help us awaken, to create this better life. We have the potential to spread our wings and fly like the butterfly. But this cocoon may feel very safe, but how long can we stay safe before we give flight to our wings? We close our practice with the Indian tradition of the word namaste. Namaste means when you slow down to yourself, you recognize you are divine inside. And you connect to this divinity, you connect to this light. And when you connect to your own, you can see it in each other. We close with this namaste to each other. The higher place in me honors and sees this higher place in you. And I send you, you might already be home, I send you on your way with your soul assignment. Sit down with three of your fears. Write them down. Three fears that are keeping you safe in your cocoon and keeping you hidden from your talents. Get to know your fears well, because when you get to know them well, our bird can take flight. Tomorrow, please bring a strap with you. Yoga strap or a hand towel. We'll get into a little more of our hamstring work and hip openers. And with that said, I thank you so much for joining. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Namaste.